Yep, I uh, still need a haircut. And I'm talking about my hair today because we are making a shampoo bar. And this shampoo bar is actually wildly different than other shampoo bars that we have made before. And I know that sounds weird because we have made four different types of shampoo bars so far on this channel using four different methods. But before I tell you why this shampoo bar is so much different than the rest of them, hello, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay, let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And today is day 158, and we are doing a new shampoo bar. And the reason we're doing this shampoo bar is because I've talked to you about the, uh, like the soap forums and everything, I'm sure, before. I've mentioned it once or twice. And uh, a recent post got a lot of attention in really strange ways when someone asked if it was possible to put, to essentially combine a Sindep bar and a cold process bar for shampoo. Specifically using SCI noodles, right? Which is a main component in the Sindep bars. And 95% of the people on this thread said, no, you can't do that. That's impossible. That won't work. That won't work. It's everything will fall out of solution. And I went, no. That's not how that particular reaction works. Because the thing is, SEI noodles, they're in solid form, right? And so if you're not melting them down and if you're controlling your heats, they can be used essentially like you would use any other inclusion in your soap, be it an exfoliant or even your essential oils or your fragrance oils or your clays. The saponification and like the chemical reaction that to create the, it goes around. And so, yeah, you can totally do that within a, a batch of soap. And I pointed that out and said that for funsies, I had tried it many, many moons ago and I wasn't believed. And so today we're going to show you how that works and why you would want to do it at all. Well, look at this little itty bitty baby video. This is awesome. So first up, we have the scent, which is actually a rosemary and mint essential oil. And we also have a lotus flower extract, just a little bit going in there. This is a super teeny tiny batch, and we're going to make it pink because none of my shampoo bars are pink, and we're going to make them different than the rest of my shampoo bars, really. And in addition to that, we are going to put in Kaylin Clay because Clay is awesome in all of the things. I have a weird story about clay, actually. I don't know if I have time to tell it in this video. Um, no, I don't. We'll save it for another day. It's a weird story. It's a fun story. And it completely ties in with all of this weird arguing. We just argue over everything anymore, don't we? Like, it's very silly. And it makes me sad that the soap making community um, argues over things so much, too, these days. Because... God, we get it everywhere else. Can we not do it in the... It doesn't matter. And uh, yeah, so this whole video, the only reason we are doing this is because of some crazy arguments. And those are the SCI noodles. Now, SCI noodles, uh, they are derived from coconut. That does not make them natural. You can say they're naturally derived. But in the U.S., that doesn't mean a whole lot of anything. So we're going to go with not natural. Okay. 
And so uh, CI noodles are commonly used in Sendat bars, right? And we have made Sendat bars on the channel before, as well as a cold processed shampoo, a hot processed shampoo, and a melt and pour, you know, glycerin shampoo, and gave you tons of information and recipes and all of that as to why um, each of these bars are useful as shampoo and what you need to do, whether you're working with cold, cold process or hot process, or there are different ways to uh, tweak your recipes and you have to have a really, really strong fatty acid profile knowledge to make cold process, hot process shampoo bars, but it is not at all impossible. Now, the question that we had on the interwebs was, can you add uh, Sindet noodles, SCI noodles, something that you would typically put in a Sindet bar to a cold process recipe? And everybody's like, no, absolutely not. No, you can't. And I'm like, well, I mean, I. I've done it, so I know for a fact you can, um, but also, even if I hadn't, the chemistry is there. You can do it, because the SCI noodles, it's not going to be a high enough melt point for the SCI noodles to, to melt down in the saponification, right? Because, like, soap does heat up during saponification, but not, yeah, no, you can do it. It would just add a sort of a suspension within the batch much like, you know, a an exfoliant that you would be putting in. Or arguably, if you want to get really technical, everything else that is not an oil or butter that you put into soap. So we are talking uh, your scent, your essential oils, your clay, your everything kind of gets bound up into this honeycomb pattern around the fatty acid chain breakdown, the, you know, the spontification chains, and uh, creating the new salt compound. So, yeah, no, I mean, technically speaking, you, yes, SCI noodles can go into a cold process shampoo uh, bar. And that was like 300 comments deep before the original poster finally like turned it off because it was just cuckoo. So we're gonna put it in. That's uh, two ounces of SCI noodles going into this one pound batch in total weight of soap, making it about an 18 ounce batch of soap shampoo bar. The shampoo bar recipe we are using is the same one we use for Aowen's hair for the textured hair and let's check out the pour. So yeah, here's the here's the pouring of the things and uh, yes again, look, you, look they're in there. So you can in fact do it. Um, is there a benefit to doing it? Um, I don't know. I mean, yes or yes and no, I suppose. I mean, for me personally, either I think that's a really hot button issue, right? Like, are your soaps, are your shampoo bars natural or are they synthetic? I don't know why you would merge the two of them and like, you know, or, you know, draw that line in the sand for an already like pretty highly debated, you know, product in and of itself. But for you know the actual performance, okay, so we have cold process recipe that's meant to be a conditioning bar, right? So it cleans, but it can clean too much and strip your hair. So if you put the SCI noodles in, which is um, an anionic surfactant, very gentle surfactant, it has really great beautiful bubbles and kind of you know helps with the sealing and the softness of the hair. Yeah, I mean, there could be benefit. Sure, I mean, I'll, I'll roll with that. Um, yeah, it, yes, there can be a benefit. Why you would do it, I'm still not going to weigh in exactly on it, but you can do it. Now, I want to show you something, though. This is an interesting thing, adding SCI noodles to, the, uh, to a cold process shampoo bar. This is after one hour. These soaps are almost ready to come out of the mold. Now, again, the noodles themselves, you can still see them. They have not see one hour they have not melted down they've not changed the structure they're still suspended in the soap itself but they're that hard after an hour which is pretty crazy but we are going to wait overnight before we test this lather so let's go check out the test okay on to the test this is the next day so about 12 hours later and they pop out of the mold like no problems whatsoever and look you can see the SCI noodles they're they're there, that's the thing. They did not melt down. It's awesome. It does kind of change the ionic structure a bit with this, and that's a different story. We don't actually have enough time to 
get into that. But the uh, we're gonna test the soap, the lather of this. And again, this is very fresh cold process soap. So it's, you know, the lather stabilizes as it cures and you know, whatever. That doesn't necessarily mean it gets bigger. That does depend on your oils, but it does stabilize. And with this particular one, you're gonna get, that's actually a pretty good lather. And the SCI noodles do contribute to that when they are, you know, when they come in contact with water, just like in a Sindet bar. So beautiful, you know, lather with that right off the bat, which is not bad for a cold process shampoo bar. So for that reason, cool and easier lather for people who have issues with that. And we're gonna do a cheap and easy cheaters way of pH testing. So this is not the right way to pH test anything, but I didn't wanna get out the tool and do the things just for one, you know, bar of soap. So I, you know, you're looking and it's sitting somewhere between eight and nine on the scale. And that's pretty stock standard for a bar of cold processed soap that's uh, 12 hours old. So does it change the pH? No. So again, is there a reason to put it in a batch of shampoo bars, the SCI noodles? I don't know. You let me know what you think. And there it is, the hybrid Sindet cold process shampoo bar. And yeah, it's totally doable. You can absolutely do it. I don't entirely know why. Um, here's the thing. So the SCI noodles, right? They are, SCI is a very, very mild and gentle surfactant. It's derived from coconut oil. It's very cool. And it creates a big, beautiful lather. And it's also it also helps out with the uh, protecting and the softening of the hair itself, which is cool. And with cold process soap, you really have to have a really heavy fatty acid profile knowledge in order to successfully create a really good bar of shampoo. And so I can see why this could be a benefit in a cold process recipe. You're sort of hedging your bets, as it were. So you can incorporate the SCI noodles to ensure you get a good lather, that it's nice and softening, and it's not going to further strip your hair. Sure, but combining a Sindet bar, a synthetic bar with a cold process bar. These are two heavily debated areas within the soap making world. I kind of have to wonder why you would want to. I think for people who are going all natural, you're gonna lose that base because you're now including a synthetic in your shampoo. But for the other side, the Sindet users, I don't know why they wouldn't like it. To be honest, it's sure. It's a thing. And if you are interested in these shampoo bars, if you want to try them, I'm not putting them on the website. They're cool. They're a really cool product. I actually did use them on my hair and they, they work great. It's a cool shampoo bar. I am going to be sending out samples. So all orders that are placed this week, just put a comment in the order and say that you're interested in the sample and I will send some through to you and you can test those, especially if you're already using my shampoo bars, you can test those against, you know, the ones that you've been using and you can let me know which one you like better. So not on soapandclay.com, but everything else that you could order is totally there. And if you are interested in uh, more soapy antics, you should subscribe to the channel. We do tests like this all the time. I like to play with weird rules that exist out there or weird things that are just randomly being said that don't make sense. And so we try to make sense of them. And sometimes we can, and sometimes we can't. And I show it all to you. So yeah, subscribe to the channel, do the things, that'd be awesome. For those of you who are here, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you. I am so glad that you have joined me for another round of 365 days of soap. Thank you again. For me, I am done for the day and I will see you guys all tomorrow. Bye.